Well, I'd like to welcome you to this lecture on the way of things. This lecture will be on the desert at night. Uh, this is a very important uh, lecture and very important concept to understand the desert at night. To understand the desert during the day, one really has to understand the desert at night. The two truly go together and while some animals will shift from back from day to night, uh, most animals prefer one or the other. And the reason that many animals prefer the nighttime is water conservation. In the summertime, uh, drying your body out when you live in an area that doesn't have a spring or a tanaha or any other liquid source of water, you really have to conserve the moisture in the body in order to survive. And this is true of ants, of centipedes, scorpions, chipmunks, uh, pack rats, and the like, as well as your deer and your bighorn sheep and so on. Will often uh, travel or be active at night. Now, some animals like the deer can go either way. They'll work the day or they'll work the night. And part of their strategy is not just water conservation because a sheep or a deer or a bird, some of these animals, coyotes, they can often travel miles to get liquid water to drink and satisfy their need for water that way. Where other animals, your cottontail and jackrabbit and your centipedes and stuff like that cannot do this. So they're going to have a propensity to try to work the night, especially during the uh, hotter times of the year. Now, another thing that makes a big difference is presence and awareness. In the dark, the game changes on presence and awareness. And of course, where it changes the greatest is in the uh, visual sense. You can no longer see an animal, whether you're predator or prey, you're no longer visible. You're cloaked, as it were. And for the predator, this has advantages. And for prey, this has advantages. And so both animals, both predator and prey, use this uh, darkness to their advantage, their own advantage. And you'll find that many animals that work the night, like say the coyote, uh, will work it because he has certain advantages, four-legged, or in the case of like a kit fox who really works the night almost exclusively, you can see them sometimes in the daylight, but they're really a creature of the night. Their legs are shorter, makes them more stable. Uh, they have huge ears in proportion to their uh, body size because they're relying on sound uh, and their sense of smell, which gives them a level of awareness that we find difficult to uh, really understand it in the sense that they do. But they can, they can smell something, know its condition, its direction, uh, to a degree that is really alien to us. In the same way with sound. They can hear something, a pack rat or a mouse or some sound, and they can determine that that's not a snake, that's a pack rat. And they can do that, and of course they have to, in many cases, bet their life on that kind of uh, ability to determine where that sound is and what it is out in the darkness. And a lot of times, if they uh, see something or hear something, you'll see a coyote or a kit fox actually circle around and try to get downwind of the noise and the sense of smell then comes into play. So they're using both sound and smell if they don't hear and identify the prey then they'll try to use their sense of smell and they 
darn well know how to get downwind and that that's going to give them in-depth information as to where the uh, creature is at the moment and what it is. Now another interesting phenomena that one should be aware of, especially during the summer months, if you can get out into the desert uh, after a rainstorm at night, uh, it, it's, a, it's a marvelous time to get an education on what's out there and its abundance. A lot of animals are going to come out that, that very night because there's just resources that they're just not going to have. Uh, even food resources, resources that were uh, too dry. If you're a pack rat and you're hungry, suddenly the seed pods and stuff that were bone dry now actually have moisture in them. And there's going to be little pockets, even from a, a fairly light rain, uh, a little hole or dimple in a rock will actually have liquid water for maybe only a few hours. The air is going to evaporate, just the warmth and the moisture in the ground <clears throat> is going to evaporate a lot of that water really within hours. Within hours, much of the liquid water that's available, and we're talking about thimble uh, fulls of water and little rocks or a puddle that's there, a little clay depression that in another hour or two that puddle is going to be soaked into the ground and the animals have to get to it before that happens so they'll try in fact a lot of animals will get active right at or during the storm to try to get this water or food or whatever resource uh, that's available and so if you can get out in the desert after a thunderstorm in the summer It'll be a valuable time to, to learn and see what's out there. And of course the insects cycle up very fast too. That night you'll find insects that you didn't know were there. Insects and even sometimes in some cases toads and animals that are just unexpected in the desert. Certainly the uh, termites will be on the loose. You'll be surprised how many termites are out in the Mojave Desert and they're going to be flying and swarming and the animals are trying to eat them because they're moist and it's just going to be quite a uh, a night after rain so it's something that you can see the populations and the activities uh, after a thunderstorm and this is of course so after any uh, I'm sure if you're in the Ponderosa Pine Forest you'll find it's a very different place at night and probably a different place at night after a rain. So it's not unique to the desert, but water is such a critical source in the desert that it's worth trying to experience. It's also uh, worth understanding that the idea of presence and, and perception and all that play a big part, such that at night during the winter, when water conservation is not the highest uh, concern, you'll still see animals working, oftentimes in fairly bitter cold conditions, hunting or going out to eat your herbivores and such, uh, simply because they're working the presence and awareness angle as opposed to trying to save water. So once you, you start to realize that this activity level is there, you'll start to see the desert during the daylight hours different. You'll start to see that those holes in the ground, for instance, have a population there that is out at night, that's, that's absent during the daytime. Indeed, most snakes are nocturnal in the desert. They don't come out during the daytime. Sometimes you'll see snakes either having to go from some place to another, uh, somewhat of an emergency situation, or if you get a cloudy bright day that's like 75, 80 degrees, something that essentially mimics uh, the nighttime uh, environment, or at least to a greater degree, 
you'll see snakes and, and other nocturnal animals out. Uh, and it's just something that you do, you'll see it. The snakes, your uh, scorpions, and so on, will be out during that period of time when it's really got an overcast and it's 75, 80 degrees. It's another time to be aware that those types of days are uniquely different in the desert such that it's worth trying to, to go out and see the desert at that time. And getting back to the concept of day and night, when you understand one, you'll understand the other better, and it gets to the point where it's a, a necessity to understand that, because you understand what's missing in the desert, and you start putting the puzzle together, and of course the nighttime is half the desert, half the desert environment occurs at night and it's just an important time to, to uh, experience the desert and if you're going on a camping trip or an outing or something it's worth turning out the uh, the lantern and, and experiencing the night that way or just driving slowly through the desert with the headlights on it and slow enough where you can see the smaller animals and not scare anything away. And another thing you can do oftentimes is just uh, if you live close enough to the desert or in the desert, actually spend a few hours once in a while at night going to a spring, uh, walking a wash with a light or without and just kind of experience the desert at night. I think you'll find it uh, enlightening. <laughs> and uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed this lecture on the way of things. And uh, join us again sometime. Thank you.